You can have your big epic films in the movie theater. All I really want to do is go into a movie theater and watch three hours of makeup tutorials. Okay. That's what yeah. I want. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hi, Michael Carr here. Have you ever wondered how movie trailer copy is written? On this episode of Ask an Expert, we're letting Brian Fink spell it out for us. Brian is an award-winning copywriter who has a vast amount of experience in entertainment marketing. He has worked at agencies such as Cimarron, Open Road, and Trailer Park on productions such as X-Men, Avatar, Monsters University, Up, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, and Iron Man. Brian has won a Key Art Award for Disney's Brave and two Pro Max Awards. And most importantly, he is a wonderful guy who knows how to laugh. Today, we're asking Brian, how do we write trailer copy? Okay, I'm here with Brian Fink. Brian, how's it going, man? It's going great, dude. How are you? Brian is this amazing copywriter that has been doing copy for forever. You're very right. seasoned and you're skilled and, and super experienced. You've been in the room with like a lot of big heavy hitters over the years. You've learned a lot of stuff. You specifically work in doing copy for advertising, for entertainment advertising, right? right? Trailers, TV spots. And so today's question for you is, Brian, how do we write trailer copy? My job is to watch the movie, talk to a producer, and then give them a packet on X amount of directions. And then a client chooses that script and they give it to the producer and editor and they start cutting it. When I started, it was actually, if you only had an opening and maybe a, a back end line and the title, it was like, okay, we need a middle and then we need a middle to the middle and then we need a back end and we had to do narration. Like it was like a three act trailer. It was like three minutes to wall to wall narrator. I, and, and that was still into like the late nineties. A family threatened by war. We have to do something. I forbid you to go. My child, you're my child. A son fighting for his beliefs. By not what you think, not all of us. Who are you people? What kind of place is this? Here's an example. You asked for an example, here's one. Imagine if everything we believed in, everything we dreamed of, and everything we loved could come true. It can for us Durrits. It's just a matter of finding his inner child. If his inner child doesn't find him first, boom, that's the intro. Yeah. Now to find out where he went wrong, he'll have to put a little faith in himself and follow his heart to make everything go right. This insert date, insert studio presents a movie that proves the first step to finding happiness is believing in yourself and then believing in everything else. Time flies. <laughs> Not joking. That's a real script. Where did it start to change from when, you know, in the 90s, it was like these long essays practically to at some point, it, there's very little copy and, and it's still done with a narrator. And now, as you know where we are now, there's no narrators anymore for the most part. How did you notice that trend come about? 2005, 2006, there were two studios in particular. One of them was Paramount. The regime there was like, less is more, pretty much. It was about moving into this era of the editor. We were going to a whole different era, especially with yeah. the technology when it advanced the cutting. But they're like, hey, let's showcase the movie instead of showcasing, you know, the script. And it's really funny now, now that we're going down this yeah. road. I remember a producer telling me one time I wrote a script like this and it was like joke after joke after joke. And the producer turned to me and said, Brian, what are we trying to sell? Are we trying to sell the movie or are we trying to sell you as a, as, a, as a writer? It made me think for a second like, hey, this was the first inkling that this was changing. And funny enough, that year, scripts were all cut in half. Really, it became this era of the editor. Yeah. Not to say it wasn't before, but the technology just improved. Graphics really exploded. So graphics and the whole technology oh, that yeah. caught up with motion graphics was a lot different than we had in even the mm. early 90s. That was a whole different thing. So people liked that. That was a part of the piece. The assignments I get is trying to like, oh, we want to build an entire teaser, entire, entire trailer around graphics. I want a graphic piece. And I'm like, yeah. that's a whole different thing. And then you tease them, but just showing a little bit of the footage at the end. At that point in time, when that transition happened where they were using less copy, they would come to me and be like, hey, you're overriding again. And I'm like, oh, 
really? I thought like, oh, having two or three minutes for a trailer was already short. And they're like, no, 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 no. It's, we, we don't have time for, for words. I always based a movie around the copy from a one sheet. So it always starts mm -hmm. from a single line and I always expanded for a trailer that way. So I kind of returned to that where it was like, okay, you're really just giving me a claim line or two for the back end and in a setup, and that was it. I'll be honest, there's times that I miss that type of yeah. trailer. I know you watch it sometimes and it's, uh, you know, yeah, it feels dated now, but at the same time, it was so much easier to follow. And I feel like it was almost easier to sell. Definitely more fun. I got the, you know, as a writer, it was like, I couldn't sit here and like really explore and have fun with words and tell a story. But now it's like, I'm gonna let the editor do this and I'm just gonna do a tagline, whether it's like, you know, kind of a wink wink to what's going on in culture today or some play on words or anything like that. Let me ask you this, Brian. So you, as one time, you were kind of explaining to me the different ways of selling a movie, which is, you know, you can go character, you can go story, you can go event. Can you kind of elaborate on that? Sure. One of my favorite ways of looking at a campaign, a movie, a TV show, a music piece, whatever, is looking at the different angles of selling it. You have story, you have a character, and then you have event. And then you have a combo part, which I like to do. And then the dreaded last fifth part, the out of the box. Now I feel like as a society and entertainment business, we're already in out of the box. Everything we do, especially with social media, which I can touch upon in a minute, it's already out of the box. The first part would be like story. How do you want to sell this movie? Um, not just genre. Some people like, oh, well, it's a comedy. It's pretty easy, right? Or if it's a thriller, it's pretty easy. Like, well, not really, because if it's a thriller, I don't want to give everything away because you always want to leave someone on a cliffhanger. A character piece is like maybe if you're working on a movie like Sideways or, or Her, they focused on the characters that were well written and delivered. So you would say, okay, I'm going to do a piece about a character or maybe there is no story. So you just want to advertise the event. You know, Marvel perfected that with all their superhero movies. They made it a really big event that's coming through. Or, and then my favorite is the combo spot. So the combo spot would be like, you start off with a storyline yeah. and the back end you do an event. I like to compartmentalize all those directions into a breakdown of a campaign, specifically TV spots. Nowadays, you could still do the same thing with digital spots and social media. I feel like that theory of how everything you break down for a campaign still applies to today. So when you're doing like a script packet, yeah. you know, for a client, you're a lot of times offering a lot of different solutions. Like here's some different ways that you can go. Yes, it's true. One of my favorite games I'd like to play with my kids right now is Wordle. And when we do it, I, it makes me feel like I'm writing copy. You're solving problems. So it always usually starts with yeah. the script. It may not, some of the copy may not end up in that yeah. final piece, but we help the editor and producer get to that point. I totally second that. When I was cutting trailers, a lot of times you're sitting there staring at a blank timeline, which is, it shouldn't be scary, but it is. But then, you know, the PA runs in and is like, oh, hey, uh, here's a script or, and this is old because now it'd be email, whatever. And you, you start looking at it and you're like, oh, okay, all right. There, to someone that's already kind of thought of some creative ideas here. Right. And even if you don't use them, it takes the pressure off. It's like, okay, the, the creative conversation has officially started. It's a collaborative process. And I always looked forward to seeing where the script went. And, you know, there were a lot of writers I know that would be like, if the middle wasn't working or they needed a different back end, they would be upset. I always thought that was great. I looked at it as a challenge. As a producer told me one time, my job as a writer is to inspire an editor. And I was just like, wow, mm. that's really good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, th I always thought that was really good. I found that to be more relevant these days, paper cutting. For people who don't understand that, it's like we would put dialogue bites in between the copy lines we write for the narration. And I, I get more requests for that these days, actually, to do more paper cutting, which- Really? Yeah, I do. I, I'm That's glad really you put, interesting to me. Yeah. Why do you think that is, that you get more requests to do that? I feel like they want to see what I see. Like, where do you see this going? It helps them to build a project. And I think also to save time, to be honest with you, I think they want to see it and be like, okay, we got to spit these out. Because a lot of this stuff, there's a lot of short form out there. That's the one thing I noticed. Everything is kind of shrunk. You know, when I first started in trailers, you know, 
you could get away yeah. with having three minute trailers. So now a lot of people are like, okay, let's do 60 second trailers. Especially for streaming. And that's the whole other thing. Doing copy now for digital or all these stream, a lot of these streaming platforms too, but mainly digital, everything has to be seen as if there's no audio and you have to put cards in there. So they come up in the screen. So everything has to be shorter. So it just feels like over my tenure, everything's just been shrinking, you know, from the three acts narration that I read to you in the beginning down to like one line. And ever we live in this culture, which I like to call seizure nation, yeah. where everything has to be fast, cut fast. Let me see it fast. And they have to be able to look at it on their phone or some mobile device to be like, hey, we're in and out and give me a couple words and give me the gist in two sentences. Yeah, sometimes I'm like surprised these days that people actually go and sit for a movie like for two hours now. Like exactly. they have the attention span exactly. to do that. I didn't understand that until I took my youngest kid to the movies one time. We were watching the movie and he stood up and he's little. And he stood up and he's like, dad, pause it. I have to go to the bathroom. I'm like, everybody in the theater cracked out. But that was the funniest <laughs> thing in the world. Like, but that's the generation. I mean, then I felt like I failed as a dad. This yeah. kid, I was like, no, you can't pause the movie. But when you have entertainment on demand, that's, that is what happens. For the next generation trying to break into entertainment advertising. Now, let's say that's either, I guess nowadays there's a lot of copywriters, producer combos, but let's just say there's someone that wants to break into copywriting for trailers. Right. What, what advice would you give them? I would say for, if you really want to be a really good copywriter, do two things. One, watch as many movie trailers and movies as possible. I always say that to all the young copywriters uh, that I've helped over the years. And two, read a lot. And the reason why I say that is because you have such a small time to get your thought or voice or attitude across to the audience that you're trying to sell that you have to have a good vocabulary. And then I would say yeah. start practicing. Look, take out your favorite movies and write the promo you'd like to see. And I remember, the, it was actually Roland, the yeah. first producer I had told me, when you want to go write, close your eyes, imagine yourself in the movie theater and read that copy aloud. You could see the trailer. Do that right now. Mm, Close your eyes. Yeah. You're looking, you have your phone, you have your iPad, you have your computer, you have whatever insert mobile device there. What are you looking at? And see, would that work on there? There is something about uh, when you're cutting trailers, same thing, kind of picturing yourself in a movie theater watching it because it gives, it kind of lends you to doing more mysterious sort of more theatrical type things. You know, you have to kind of put yourself in that mindset to think really, really epic and huge and, and think events like, oh, this is a huge event and how are we, you know, and that's what gets asses in seats really, you know? Yeah, it really does. Like what, what are we going to see that we haven't seen before? Because now we have even more competition where it's like real life videos. They're just showing people either, you know, fight at a Starbucks or cars spinning in circles or something. I don't know what it is. A cat beating up other cats. I have no idea. You gotta think bigger than that. Like what's something that we, we haven't seen before that's gonna be like, oh, you know what? That's escaping reality. I remember being in a meeting with MGM. I'm throwing that out since that's barely around anymore. But like, mm -hmm. I remember the guy was pitching us an idea for a special shoot. This is like, we open on a horizon, an aircraft carrier <laughs> hovers in the water, a jet goes, boom, explosion. That's the opening shot of the trailer. I'm like, what? what? That's a special shoot? That was crazy to me. His point was, think bigger, shock effect, you go, to a dark room with strangers to share a common experience of something that could take you out of reality. As a writer, I have to help build that bridge to get them there. Young copywriters, producers, editors, if they wanna keep this fantasy and dream and the best job alive, think outside just the reality and make it big. Thank you so much for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Your knowledge is so, so great. And I know a lot of people are gonna take a lot from this. So thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. Good to see you as always.